Hi everyone, it's Don once again, and this is video number 139. I'm standing out here at the beautiful Okahumpka Recreation Center, and behind me is the location for Harry and the Natives. Yes, I got it right this time, it's Harry and the Natives, and they have broken ground and actually started work. I'll show you footage of some of that in this video. I'm also going to show you footage of a lot of other things going on here in the villages, in Middleton, Eastport, Moultrie Creek, Shady Brook, and a lot of the commercial development that's happening in and around the villages. So this video is kind of special to me. Number 139, I know the number doesn't mean much, but this is actually the 100th video that I've actually started doing the voiceovers. Uh, I was a little hesitant at first to do it, but a lot of people asked, you know, they didn't like the subtitles, so I started doing the voiceovers. The other thing that makes this video special is that when you're watching this, on April 7th, that marks 10 years to the day that I've been here in the villages. Debbie and I closed on our home April 7th, 2014, and we haven't regretted a day of it in our lives. This is the best move we ever made. This video, I originally had a different title planned for it. It was gonna be 10 years in the villages and 10 things I hate about it. Well, after thinking long and hard about it, I said, you know what? That's not what my videos are about. My videos are about the construction progress and bringing you good factual information without bias. Okay, it may be a little bit biased because I do love living here in the villages, but I have no commitment or loyalty to anybody but you, my viewers. My goal is to bring you good, honest, factual information, nothing more, nothing less. So things I hated about the villages, I passed on that. There is one thing I dislike, and that's misinformation. And again, that's what I'm here for, to give you good factual information. Along with that, there's two other things I wanna discuss real quick. The first of these is protecting your home. Protecting your home against title theft. The Sumter County Clerk of Courts Office offers a service where you can get notified if there's any changes to your records. I highly recommend you go to their site, it's free. Here's the site on the screen, and it's also in the description of this video. Go there, register your name and your address, and protect your home. The other thing we need to protect your home against is squatters. It's been a big issue in the news lately, and Governor DeSantis has taken decisive action to help mitigate this from happening. But you can do more yourself. If you're a seasonal resident here, talk to your neighbors, the ones that are here full time. Give them your name, your phone number. Make sure they understand that you're not gonna be in your house have them call you if they see somebody going into your house that shouldn't be. Likewise, if you have a neighbor who's a seasonal resident and you see somebody going into their house, call them, let them know. If you can stop this at the beginning, it will save a mountain of headaches in the long term. But we all have to work together to do this. We all have to be neighbors. We all have to watch out for each other. So take it to heart and protect each other and protect our homes. We've worked long and hard all our lives to get where we are today. So, enough of that, let's get on with the video as we continue to follow the dream. Our first stop in this video will be Harry and the Natives. As I mentioned during the intro, work has started at Harry and the Natives. This was shot about two days before the intro was shot, and you could see they had been moving some dirt around. In the intro shot, this dirt has been redistributed, and this whole area has been smoothed out. I'll fly through the area where the restaurant is going to be in. We'll get a look at their water view that they'll have. And then I'll turn around and we'll get a nice view of what the overall site looks like today. The last information I've seen says that Harry and the Natives will be open sometime late this year. When I shot this, there was absolutely no breeze and the water was smooth as glass. You can see the reflection of the sky and the water in this shot.
The Okahumpka Recreation Center is the building to the right of this small man-made peninsula. We've got all wood veneers, period. Dovetail construction on the drawers, full extension slides on the drawers. Nobody will beat our quality, nobody will beat our service, but again, it's all about lifestyle and aesthetics for your beautiful home. Murphy Office. Our next stop will be just north of Lake Sumter Landing to look at the island revetment project that's going on to deal with some erosion issues on this island. On the east side of the island where they're working now, you can see the heavy equipment moving the rock. Contrary to what many want to believe, there was no design or construction issues with this island. This is a man-made island. It was built to the Army Corps of Engineers, state and federal specifications. Everything was done properly. Mother Nature decided to take over and prove that she was smarter than man once again and created an erosion problem for us. This is looking at the west side of the island. The riprap, or rock, is all in place. Now they've got to go back and take care of the landscaping that was disrupted by the heavy equipment moving over the island. We'll continue our journey now a little bit farther to the north, to the location of where the Hacienda Hills Country Club used to be. Here we can see the pro shop is almost finished, and as we pan to the right, you can see the location where 25 courtyard villas will be built, and they've started on the underground work to support that. They'll be working on the site work for about another month, and then they'll start building homes. I would expect to see these homes go up for so sometime this summer, and I suspect they will go very quickly. We'll continue now up to Spanish Springs and take a look at the work going on at Blondie's. Blondie's is an outdoor bar that's being built and will be attached to the Sharon Performing Arts Center. They got their inspiration for Blondie's from the Sawgrass Grove area and the success they had with the outside bars there. This is a lower level view of the work going on at Blondie's. It was kind of a hairy flight to make because of all the trees and bushes around. I was only a couple of feet away at any one time from some sort of plant or tree in preparation for crashing. In my opinion, I think one of their biggest challenges with Blondie's is going to be the seating and keeping people from just sitting there watching the music and not buying drinks. We'll jump to the south now and go down to Trailwinds Plaza where work is going on there at the new Mr. Car Wash car wash facility. Mr. Car Wash is a large chain of car wash facilities throughout Florida. This is one of their newest ones. There's another one in Leesburg and a whole bunch throughout the state. I'm sure that the car wash facility that's already in existence down by Pinellas Plaza is just tickled to death to be having some competition so close by. I have no idea when Mr. Car Wash will be open, but it's obvious that there's still a lot of work to be done before they're ready to. We'll slide a little bit to the west and take a look at how construction is going on Target and Outback Steak. They haven't started on the Target building yet, but it has been cleared for quite a while, so long in fact that the grass is starting to grow back. But as we rotate around, we can see that the parking lot is being built. And it looks like they've come a long way on it. We'll fly across the parking lot now, and we'll take a look at Outback Steak. Outback Steak is making much more progress. I always found it kind of interesting that some buildings they build the parking lot first, other times they build the building first, then the parking lot. I don't understand, I don't know the, the logic behind that, but obviously there is some reason they do it that way.
We'll continue our journey west now to the intersection of 466A and Powell Road. This is the southwest corner of Powell Road and 466A. CVS is being built here. It looks like it's making really good progress. If I were to venture on an opening date, I would probably target around the 1st of May that this will be opening. They're doing a lot of work inside in preparation. We'll rotate around real quick. And we can see that Wawa has started work here. They've cleared all their hurdles with all the agencies in the city of Wildwood. So work has started. They're working on the turn lane and the entrance to the gas station. Wawa is obviously trying to make great inroads into the market in this area. To me still, it's just a convenience store and a gas station. Rotating around again, we're going to fly over to behind CVS and look at the Home Depot that's being built. I've been hearing rumors of the 1st of June for opening, but who knows. There's no sign of stocking shelves yet, and the outside yard is still basically empty. When we start seeing a lot of cars and trucks here to deliver merchandise, then we'll know it's really getting close. And no, it won't be golf cart accessible. One of the questions I commonly get asked is what's going in in the lot just behind CVS? I'll rotate around and I'll show you that lot. Honestly, I have no idea yet. I haven't seen any plans come out on this or any documents, so we'll have to wait and see. Country Village Power Equipment and Golf Carts is the place for all your Yamaha golf car needs. Family owned and operated for over 20 years in the city of Webster, carrying the full line of both gas and electric Yamaha golf cars. Country Village will build one to your specification, including the latest in lithium batteries. Country Village has a large selection of parts for both gas and electric golf cars, and unlike some other dealers, sells directly to the consumer. Service for your new and current golf car is available at your home or in store. Each new golf car includes an unmatched six year warranty. For the best value, and golf car ownership. Come to Country Village Power Equipment and Golf Cars. Let's move back south just a little bit again to where a new section of the Village of Richmond is being built. This section of Richmond is on the east side of Megason Road. There's a set of courtyard villas and either veranda or designer homes. I frequently get asked, are they going to be doing custom lots here? I don't know. If it's veranda homes, the answer is no. If they do designer homes, then yes, there's a high probability that they will have lots for custom builds. At the south end, they're extending the walking trail that comes from the Okahumka Rec Center all the way up to this new section of Richmond. It will cross the Buena Vista Extension and then follow around Megason, and it looks like it'll have an entry into this section of the village of Richmond. Why they waited so long to build this section? My magic eight ball couldn't give me an answer to that one. When I drove by this section this morning, they were already putting up the walls for the courtyard villa community. This area next to the retention pond is where the postal station is going for this section of Richmond. And no, there will not be a pool in this section. There will be a gate, though, at the entrance to this section of Richmond. Now we'll slide to the south to Warm Springs Avenue, where they're building Fire Station 46 for Village's Public Safety Department. Work on Station 46 has definitely commenced. They've got the foundation framed and the rebar for the concrete, so the next day or two we should see concrete being poured for the slab. After that, things will probably move pretty quickly on building this fire station. There are multiple commercial properties under construction on Warm Springs Trail. Here's one of them.
Let's continue our journey a little farther south now and take a look at the Woodlands Golf Course and some of the other areas surrounding it. Let's start with taking a look at the apartments that are just to the west of Monarch Grove and south of McClure. Look at these. Man, these things are packed in there tight. Not the place I think I'd want to live. I live in a courtyard villa, and it's still not that packed in. And this isn't the only place like this being built. There's a set of houses on the northwest corner of 466A and Powell Road, just north of the Wawa, that are packed in like this, and it looks like even tighter. This is the village of Wellpoint, just south of Monarch Grove. I've been saying it's going to be a while before this opens up, and this is why. This is its postal center and neighborhood recreation area. The pool hasn't even started being dug yet, and they're just now starting on the framing for the postal station. Until this is ready, we're not going to see anything happen around here. Now we're looking at the village of Oak Hollow and the Woodlands Golf Course. They're just getting started on the Woodlands Golf Course. You can see the green there that's been cut in. But it is going to have a lot of water, it looks like. This should be a very nice golf course with all the trees that they've left in place. If you look carefully, you can also see the road beds being cut in, and many of the lots are being roughed in. But it's still going to be a long time before this area is ready. Possibly another year before this area is ready. The paved road you see here the is large Corbin white Trail. area at the top Same of the Corbin screen Trail that is runs the Farragut Ball Field. We'll see Grove more of that in just a minute. All the way down to the Farragut Ball Fields. It's only two lanes instead of the four lanes that it is through Linden and Monarch Grove. The McNeil Marsh Bend traffic circle is now complete. They're still working on the road, though, to the south. But it will only be two lanes. It's not going to be four lanes. Now we'll move a little bit to the east, to the end of Corbin Trail in Monarch Grove, and take a look at the golf course and well point in that area. This is the north end of Corbin Trail in the village of Well Point. Now we're heading a little bit south, and we're going to fly over the Live Oak Golf Course. This is a 18-hole pitch and putt course that they're building. And this plot coming up here is the San Tropez Recreation Center. They've got the parking lot in already, and they're getting ready to put in some of the pickleball courts. As you can see, there's still a long way to go on this golf course. I wouldn't expect to see it open and ready for play until late summer or maybe even early fall. We'll head back now towards Corbin Trail, fly across it, and take a look at some of the areas of Well Point that are under construction. As we cross Corbin Trail, you'll see some of the first walls going up for courtyard villas. This is going to be the first area that they start building homes in when they do eventually start. But again, I don't see them starting probably until this summer, and until they start here, I don't think we're going to see McNeil Road open either. Remember, the driving force for any changes here are home sales. And if they're not selling homes in this area, there's no reason to open it up. My estimation of the timeline is validated by the early state of construction of the Neighborhood Recreation Center here, as well as the state of construction in the villages of Shady Brook and Well Point. As this area is still under construction and will be for a long time, I want to remind people, please stay out of this area. It's dangerous. You really don't want to be back in here and get hurt. And it is a third degree felony for trespassing. I'm not going to say anything more. I think you all know how I feel about this.
So that was the Live Oak Golf Course we just looked at. Let's go look at the Laurel Oaks Golf Course and the work that's happening now on the Meadows Championship Course. The Laurel Oaks Golf Course is a nine-hole executive golf course, unlike the Live Oaks Course, which is a pitch and putt. Some of the holes on Laurel Oaks run parallel to the Florida Turnpike. Hopefully they're far enough away that if I play here and my ball does like it normally does, I don't end up hitting a car on the turnpike. But all bets are off. Just don't be on the turnpike when I'm on this course. Laurel Oaks, just like Live Oaks, I don't expect to be open until late summer or early fall. Coming up again on the left is the Central Pay Recreation Center. This will be a village recreation center. As we turn around again and head south, we're going to be flying over the village of Edenfield. And you can see they've started roughing in the roads, but they've got a lot of work to go until they're even ready to pave these roads. Based on where things are right now in this area, I would be very surprised if they even started building homes by late this year or early next year. The area on the other side of Bexley Trail at the top of the screen has been under construction for a couple of weeks now. This is where the Meadows Golf Course is going. They've started digging the big giant retention ponds that we normally see. And it's also where the village of Green Grove Hill and Hopkins Pass are going to be built. But I think those villages are still probably two years in the future. McNeil Drive will continue through this area, going south, eventually turning west, and meeting up with 471, about a mile or so north of Bevel's Corners. But that's many years in the future, and things can easily change between now and then. Now let's go really south to Middleton and take a look at some of the things that are happening down there. The buildings in Middleton have been under construction for over a year now. On the corner here is the Victory Family Sports Grill. This is an FMK restaurant, just like many of the restaurants in the country clubs and our town squares. The building with the metal framework holding up the roof is the Four Rivers Smokehouse restaurant. And this is the Middleton Hotel, the second hotel in this area. As we round the corner here, you'll see an alleyway between two buildings with a canopy over part of it. That's the 24 Middleton restaurant that was recently announced. The open field just beyond these buildings is where a new grocery store is going to be. Now, this used to be on the village's map, but they quickly took it off once it was made known that people could see it. But you can still see it on the mini-map in the lower left corner. They're now working on the facades of many of the buildings that have been under construction for a while. We'll rotate around a little bit to the south. We see the Citizens First Bank, and to its left is the coffee shop. Whether it'll be a Starbucks, I don't know. I don't think so, but you never can tell. I'm going to roll around a little bit, and I'm going to take a trip up the main street of Middleton, something that I won't be able to do too much longer. As we fly down Main Street, you see that there's a wide boulevard between the two directional lanes. And as we move towards the end of it, the boulevard becomes even wider. What they have planned for this is anybody's guess, but I'm sure it's going to be interesting. It is an impressive view, though, looking at the high school going down the middle of the street. I had previously said that this open area between these two buildings was the children's splash area. I was incorrect. It's just an entrance into the parking lot. That splash area is on the other side of the second building. This building is called the Boathouse, and it's going to be a restaurant. But it's got some interesting features on the back side. It looks like a dock and some other areas for small boats. So who knows what's going to happen. And of course, you have these steps going down to the water. I don't know what that's all about yet. I'll gain some more altitude, and you can see that there's more buildings under construction and just how big the Middleton downtown area is. Middleton downtown is going to be a little different than what we're used to seeing in our town squares, but it's geared towards a different audience, but it's still going to be accessible to everyone in the villages, as well as Middleton.
Now let's jump a little bit to the east to the Shallow Creek Golf Course and Country Club. Opening sometime in late spring or early summer, Shallow Creek will be the first of the three championship golf courses scheduled to open in this area. It's been a couple of weeks since the video was shot for video 138, and you can already see a significant difference in the conditions of the fairways on the Shallow Creek course, and it only stands that it'll get better over the next few weeks in preparation for opening. This is the clubhouse for the Shallow Creek Golf Course, and in it is also Boosters, another sports-themed establishment in this area. Sometimes you gotta wonder, were there two parties at play here trying to make decisions, and one didn't know what the other was talking to? Having two sports-themed venues so close together seems a little odd. There has been significant progress on this building, in just the last couple of weeks. So it stands to reason that this building, and possibly even boosters, will be opening at the same time as the golf course. We'll rotate around and get a quick look at the Street of Dreams area where all the model homes are being shown. We'll slide to the east a little bit more now and get a quick look at the village of Moultrie Creek and the village of Shady Brook. This is the village of Moultrie Creek. Obviously, construction is well underway for this village. Many of these homes have already been sold, and of course, any view lots were snapped up almost instantly. The front nine for the Shallow Creek Championship Golf Course snakes its way through the village of Moultrie Creek. When you cross the water that's going through the middle of the screen, then you're in the village of Shady Brook. The dog-themed Saluki Rec Center is right up ahead. Rotate around a little bit more, and we get a quick look at the village of Water's Edge. The main road you see on the screen is Marsh Bend Trail, and on the right side of it is the village of Shady Brook, and as we continue to rotate around, we go back into the village of Moultrie Creek. Many of the homes in Moultrie Creek are already occupied with new residents. Moving just a little bit to the northeast, we end up at the Bel Air Executive Course. This is the course maintenance area for the Bel Air Executive Course and the driving range. The starter shack is just a little bit to the west. We get a good look here at some of the holes on Bel Air. And of course, there's water in play. There's always water in play, it seems like, around here. And my ball knows exactly how to get in the water. The Bel Air Executive Course runs parallel to Central Parkway that you see on the left side of the screen. Up ahead is Fire Station 48 for the Village's Public Safety Department. It's coming along quickly, and my understanding is that it'll be opening in about two months. We'll take another pass over the Bel Air Executive Course, and of course the nice long lake that comes into play, it seems like, on every hole. On the left is the village of Lakeview, and work has already started on it. Right now they're laying in the water mains. The Lakeview Executive Course looks to have the potential to be one of the prettier courses that's been built in the last couple of years. Let's take a quick non-profit moment and talk about two really good charities. First up is Hope Service Dogs. They breed, raise, and train service dogs, therapy dogs, and companion dogs for those in need. Doing this takes a lot of time, effort, energy, and money. You can help them by going to hopeservicedogs.org and making a donation to their efforts. 
Next up, on May 18th, the Warrior Wheels Festival is coming to the Polo Grounds. Soldier Girl Coffee and Warrior Wheels are raising money to donate a vehicle to a veteran in need. So please come out. There'll be lots of entertainment and vendors. I hope to see you there. Let's move now over to Eastport, where things are really springing to life. The first building we see here under construction is a new golf cart store for the village's golf carts. As we rotate around and we go up a little farther, this building, Building 12, was recently confirmed by the villages to be their new sales center. It's going to be a big building, but then again, they do a lot of sales. As we rotate around to the north, we see a couple of more foundations for buildings under construction, and two more buildings where the walls are already going up. I'll head now towards the Eastport Hotel. We'll come back to that in a little bit. And the driving range and the work going on there. On the driving range, on this berm, they're putting in the sprinkler system. I was surprised at how wavy the lines were for the piping. I figured they'd be straight lines. This video was shot a couple of days ago, but I went by it yesterday and they've stopped putting in the sprinklers and now they're putting in the trees on the berm. So a lot of progress being made. This building is the new Village's Health Building. It's the farthest along in Eastport and will probably be the first one to open. And it's probably needed as health care is a critical issue for everybody here in the Villages. No, it's not the new hospital that's planned. That's still under discussion. I have no idea when anything is going to happen on that yet. I'll gain a little altitude now and give you a nice overview of the downtown area of Eastport. As you can see, a lot of things happening here. I'm going to rotate around now and we'll get a better look at the village of Water's Edge, which is on the south side of Central Parkway. As you can see, there's a lot of construction going on there. They're getting ready to put a lot of roads in. The Neighborhood Recreation Center and Postal Station is nearly done, so it won't be too much longer now before they start selling this area. Between the villages of Water's Edge, Shady Brook, and Moultrie Creek, they've got a lot of area to concentrate on down here, and they're not going to split their forces and efforts and start working up at Well Point yet. What looks like a desert is actually the Farragut ball fields getting ready for the next stage of their construction. Looking at Eastport from the north side now, we get a better look at the Olympia Recreation Center and the work going on there. Walls have already started coming up. They're still working on the columns for the indoor athletic area. As we fly over to Sunset Island, we can see a lot of progress is being made here. The palm trees that they planted a month or two ago have really started to grow. They finished the brick sidewalk, and now they're working on the west side of the island, and they're putting in palm trees and other things. As we look to the south, we get a view of the Eastport Hotel and the work that's going on there. They're starting to lay out the roads and the parking lots. Next will come the buildings, so it's going to happen pretty quick. Here's a look at where the stage is going to be that overlooks the water, and you'll be able to sit at Sunset Island and see and hear the music from there. There's about a minute left on this video, so we'll take another look at the Olympia Recreation Center and the Farragut Ball Fields and some more commercial area. Before I go, I want to encourage you, enjoy life, look for the good things in it, don't dwell on the negative. Life is much too short, so let's enjoy it to the fullest. Please support my sponsors. Without their support, these videos simply wouldn't be possible. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. And if you dislike it, really tell me how you feel about it and hit the dislike button twice. As we fly over the Farragut ball field, we see the traffic circle where Bexley Trail and Corbin Trail meet. As we head south, we see the sand courts that are being built, as well as the outdoor activity courts, and just beyond it, another location where it appears a grocery store will be built. Thanks again for watching this video. I'm Don Wiley. Have a good day.